receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. Open your heart as the servant of God, Pastor Jacob Elego, brings you the very mind of God. Welcome to Faith of Our Fathers. We thank God for the privilege to listen to His word at this time. We appreciate God for what He's doing in our country, in our land, in this unfolding socio-political uh, situation in Nigeria and beyond. I'd like to assure you as a preacher that though times may be tough, that is not the end of the road for you. Cheer up because there is still a better tomorrow. I'm speaking to you this time on the fourth man in the fire. The fourth man in the fire. There are two words there. Fourth and then fire. And I want to establish that topic which look a little bit strange from the book of Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 23 And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Then he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart. And the fourth, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. It's like the Son of God. In verse 21, let's dovetail. Then these three men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hearts, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The passage I've read to you has established the topic sentence, the fourth man in the fire. The circumstance about the story was that there were a set of Hebrew men, Jewish young men, called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the land of Babylon because they had been taken captive and took, taken to a strange land. Then the king came up that he made a fiery, a golden, you know, very tall golden image and then dedicated that image to the goddess of Babylon and he wanted everybody to rise and worship so a trumpet was blown and as soon as that trumpet was blown it was expected that every inhabitant the, uh, all the cities that were under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar as soon as the trumpet was blast, they were to bow down and worship the golden image. But we have these three beautiful Hebrew men who distinguished themselves. They refused to bow down to worship that goddess set up by Nebuchadnezzar. That infuriated the king. And the king decided that something must be done about them. He gave them another chance and yet they were consistent in their conviction. They refused to bow down. They were Christians with conscience. They were believers with basic instruction. And they are bound by that, damning the consequence. So you will see in that story then, the king commanded and they heated the furnace times three, made it very hot. And then cast them into the fiery furnace with the intention that it will burn them to ashes. It will call that crimination. Just criminate them, or you will find these ashes. But 
the fourth man appeared in the fire. The king himself saw there was a fourth man and they were loosed inside the fire, dancing, having fellowship in the fire. The fire could not hurt them because the fourth man was in the fire with them. And that fourth man, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, in the Old Testament, if an 18 king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar could discover, could understand that the fourth man in the fire, the form of the fourth man was like the Son of God. At this time, Jesus had not been incarnated. But understand, there is what we call Christophany in theology. Jesus was already existing before he was incarnated in the New Testament. So if an 18th king like Nebuchadnezzar could understand that there is a fourth man that is a friend to those who are persecuted, then the Nigerian church should cheer up. There is no need for us to go on rioting. There is no need for us to fight all around. We should know that the Lord God Almighty, the resurrected and ascended Christ, the glorified Christ is still there with you. Now, I don't know the kind of furnace that Nebuchadnezzar of this world, that the politicians of this world, that the ungodly men of this world have created for you. I don't know the kind of fire burning you right now from your family, from your foes, or even from unfriendly friends. I don't know the fire they have kindled against your finances, kindled against you because you refuse to compromise your faith and you are faced with number one, persecution, number two, opposition, number three, oppression, and number four, intimidation and harassment. And you said, me, I cannot give my body because of promotion. I am not going to worship idol because of money. I refuse to go into courtism or to go into some kinds of yahoo yahoo practice that other young men are doing, going to sleep in shrine, giving marks on our body, or going into some nefarious blood covenant in order to make it in life. You refuse. And men now team up against you in that office and said, since you refuse to join us in stealing government money and you are going to expose us, your refusal will hinder us, we will show you and they tap their finger at you and they conspired against you and they said we will bring you down into the fire can i give you a good news jesus is always there to stand by you in the fiery fauna jesus is that fourth man he knows how to deliver the righteous from the evil conspiracy of the world in which we live today so i want to encourage you dear comrade in the narrow way that leads to heaven what are we going through now oppression? What are we going through now? Our rights are being denied us in our very eyes. What are we going through now? Ungodly men have taken counsel. There is a conspiracy to silence our voice, to turn us to second-hand, second-class citizen in our own land. They want to turn us to stranger nativity. i like to let you know that Jesus is still on the throne. Cheer up. Don't give up to all the conspiracy in your office because you refuse to compromise your faith. Cheer up. There is still hope for you. Now the fourth man appeared in the fire. The fire was burning, but it did not consume them. That fire could mean arrow of attack. That fire could mean the tongue of wicked people. If the fire did not consume them at that time, Today, I am promising you, I am speaking into your life, the presence of the Son of the living God with you in that fire will turn that heated furnace into a cold room for you in Jesus' name. What did the Bible promise you as I leave this matter and pray with you? The Bible said, even in the book of Isaiah, it said, when you pass through the fire, it will not hurt you. The fire did not hurt the terrible children. I prophesy to you today then, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, that all the fire kindled against you. That furnace you are going through right now, the presence of the sons of God will make a way of escape from you. You are coming out of that death. You are coming out of that disease and sickness. 
You are coming out of that nightmare, demonic oppression. And the church of God in Nigeria, I have a good news for you. You are going to smile at the end. There is the joy at the end of the tunnel. No matter how dark the tunnel may look like today, at the end of the tunnel, some years ago, we entered into a tunnel in France. And for several minutes, we are in a dark tunnel. But at the end of that tunnel, that was in France, there was light that beamed at us very soon. There will be light for you at the end of the tunnel in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, I thank you. I praise your name because of your children saying amen here. This fiery furnace of life will not burn them in Jesus' name. Whatever the devil likes to do, we are going to survive this time. And by the grace of God, the fourth man in the fire, Jesus Christ, will sustain us. And it will quench the effect of this flame on our lives in Jesus' name. I thank you for answering me in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen.